Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to discuss apexogenesis and apexification. What is the difference between these two types of treatment modalities? These treatment modalities are for the pediatric patients where young teeth with permanent teeth just erupted and their roots are not yet closed. The root apexes are not yet closed, roots are not yet formed. In these cases, if teeth get traumatized, infected, or there is some iatrogenic exposure, then we have to either initiate apexogenesis or we have to initiate apexification. So let's start today's lecture. As I told you that these are the endodontic treatment modalities for infected or non-vital young permanent tooth with a wide open blunderbuss apex. Now what is a young permanent tooth? It is the tooth which is recently erupted into the oral cavity and whose root formation has not yet been completed. That is why there is an open apex. We know that apex closes after three years of the eruption of a permanent tooth. If such a tooth gets involved endodontically. So there will be a problem in treating that type of tooth. Let's see what are those problems. There will be an open apex, hence there won't be any hard tissue stop which we call the apical stop against which we are going to pack the gutta perca and we are going to get the tight hermetic seal over there. The tight hermetic seal at the apex is the key to the success of endodontic treatment. The open apex of the root canal tends to be shaped like a blunderbuss, making it difficult to obturate. The apex with root filling material. So, epicectomy is not advisable over here. The reason is, root probably would be too small in the size. Then walls of the immature roots they are liable to fracture when you will be condensing the retrograde filling material. Even when you are performing the endodontics chances are that the dentine is so thin that the roots they may fracture while you are obturating the canal. Epexogenesis. What is that? It is a physiologic process and formation of apex in vital, young, permanent teeth with appropriate vital pulp therapy. It is not involved with the non-vital pulp therapy. Over here, it is vital pulp therapy in epexogenesis. If normal pulp tissue with minimal inflammation is present, normal root and development will occur. However, in immature teeth with pulp necrosis and bacterial infection, the long-term prognosis is related to the stage of root development and the amount of root dentine present at the time of injury. What is the rationale? As I have already told you that the long-term prognosis of endodontically treated immature teeth is poor. The reason is there won't be any apical seal. The root length will be short. Periodontal support will be poor. And there will be poor crown root ratio. 
there will be relatively thin dentine of incompletely formed roots and open apices are at the risk of fracture during obturation. We know that immature teeth, their pulp has tremendous repair potential. So what we do, we utilize that repair potential the pulp revascularization and repair will more readily occur in those teeth and subsequently the apex is formed, root length is developed and we are going to have good apical foramen where we can, if we want, we can initiate the further treatment. <clears throat> what are the indications for apexogenesis? Traumatic or mechanical exposures in the immature teeth and curious exposures. Remember, whenever there is a chance of vitality, whenever there is a chance of vitality, apexogenesis should be treatment of choice. What are the goals of apexogenesis? To sustain a viable Hertwig's root shaft. To allow continued development of root length for favorable crown root ratio. The treatment strategies for these type of teeth if they got traumatized. So we aim at the preservation of pulp vitality in order to secure further root development and tooth maturation or root maturation. And then this type of treatment also promote the apex formation, which we call root and closure. Generating dentinal bridge at the site of pulpotomy as well. I will show you the pictures. Treatment may involve direct pulp capping. It may involve indirect pulp capping if still the exposure is not there or if exposure is few hours old then to remove the coronal part of the pulp and irrigate the pulp area, the coronal area, and place calcium hydroxide directly over there so that the dentinal bridge is going to be formed. Contraindications of apexogenesis. If there is severe crown root fracture that requires intraradicular retention like post and core for restoration. If there is severe crown root fracture and it is difficult for you to keep, provide the permanent restoration, then apexogenesis is not the treatment of choice. You have to make a decision seeing the remaining coronal portion of the tooth. Then comes tooth with an unfavorable horizontal root fracture. Carious tooth which is beyond repair or restoration. And necrotic pulp. For necrotic pulp, we have a different treatment modality if the necrotic pulp is in the immature dentition. We call it apexification. We will discuss that in a subsequent lecture. Say for instance, a patient comes to you with fractured crown, where pulp is exposed. You took an x-ray and you found out that the apex is open. Pulp is vital. You remove the coronal portion of the pulp and after irrigation you placed calcium hydroxide after three months recall the 
dentinal bridge is formed and if you see over here apex is developing root is developing apex is forming this is same patient after 18 month recall 18 month recall and you can see over here the apex is fully formed now check out the size of the root the length of the root and beautifully formed dentinal bridge in the coronal portion now we can go for the permanent restoration of this tooth so over here we are going to finish this lecture and in the next lecture we are going to discuss about the epexification thank you very much wait for the next lecture bye